So how do parents guide their children in the age of technology? Screens are everywhere. You know there's a lot of negative aspects of this too. There's cyberbullying because of the apps and social media, sleep deprivation, social isolation. And uh, those are just some of the things that are a result of living in this technological world. Of course, there's lots of advantages as well. We appreciate the technology. So we're going to see if we can help parents guide their children through some of this. And, maybe even ourselves. We have on our distinguished panel uh, youth expert Jonathan McKee. Jonathan has written 20 books including The Teen's Guide to Social Media. Good to have you back. Distinguished. Distinguished, yes. Home and gardening host, Paul de France. More importantly, four daughters. Less distinguished. Four teenage daughters. Yeah, please pray for me on that yes, one. Yes, we yeah, will. That'd be great. We certainly will, Paul. And Brody Haight works with young people all around the world including here in Canada. Brody, good to have you back on the panel. And okay. he is the most colorful man yeah, I know. Yeah, and he got, he got some new oh, things in awesome. here there too. I'm uh, envious. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna attain your level in about two years. <laughs> <laughs> lots of, you know, there's lots of these surveys, uh, Jonathan, that come out. And one recent one says 50% of teens say they are addicted to their devices, including social media and apps. And those are the ones that admit the addiction. Even if it's higher than that, it's clearly large. So how is, you know, as we start this conversation, do we even, you know, broach it with our kids? <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. And, and that would be cool is if we were actually engaging our kids in conversation about it. Sometimes yeah. our tendency as parents is to overreact when really what we need to do is interact. Mm -hmm. Because overreacting is like, hey, I just want to look for all the perfect filters and the perfect blocks and the perfect screen time limits that will raise my kid. Those won't raise their kids. As, as helpful as those are, as helpful as boundaries are, we need to also be bonding with our kids. So we need to talk with them about this stuff. And, and honestly, young people are open to conversations about it. it. Not the, hey, just don't because I said so, mm -hmm. but the, you know, ask them questions about, hey, you know, there was, works. Yeah, exactly, yeah. you know, hey, there was a survey where 68% of teenagers actually said that they wish they could spend more to more face-to-face -face conversation than, you know, screen-to-screen -screen conversation. What do you think about that? What about your friends? What, you know, we could talk and engage with them about that. And the more we dialogue about that kind of stuff and maybe model it ourselves, maybe turn off our own devices at the ta dinner table <laughs> and engage in conversation, maybe we can get some conversation yeah. started. Yeah, because this is how it looks. It's like, all right, the girls, I just want you to stop just one second. <laughs> the, it's bad. It's very bad. You're spending too much time on your, on your oh, crumb. You know, you know, that's what we're looking at. And as far as I'm concerned, the, that interaction factor is absolutely necessary. But kids, I, mean, I have four teenage daughters, as has been you know, stated through, you know, in myth and legend. Mm -hmm. Kids, particularly teenagers, can smell BS from a mile away. Mm -hmm. They can, you know, they can, they, they have a, a high sense for hypocrisy. So the whole old school methodology of being like, you know, as you were saying, like, well, this is what we're saying as adults. Do you, that's just not going to work. They're going to be like, you do it, so we're going to do it too. It is an addiction. It's getting worse. Mm -hmm. I have, I have daughters who are have been diagnosed with things I didn't even think existed. <laughs> uh, I won't go into the names of them, but I'm looking at this and saying, well, yeah. The world has never had an age where we have not only been affected by having a, a light screen this close to our face. Like when I grew mm -hmm. up, it was like my dad going, don't see too close to the TV. Mm -hmm. you know, but the wires are going in the back of the TV. I'm holding <laughs> this, and the wires are going through my body into this phone. Mm -hmm. That's going to have a physiological effect, and that's not even getting into the content and what we're taking in and what we're comparing ourselves to with social media. But a lot of parents are acting out of fear. And when we act out of fear, we act in a harsh way. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the, the tendency to overreact just doesn't do good when it comes to talking to our kids about mm. any of these issues. And uh, when we freak out, we don't become safe anymore. And you're starting to hear that word safe mm. a lot in parenting circles right now. Because sadly, you know, parents think about this. I, I talk with kids when it comes to, uh, especially when it comes to temptation of, of, you know, sexual images and that kind of stuff. I say, well, why don't you talk with your parents about that? The number one reaction I get from young people is laughter mm. to that. They go, they're the last people I would tell. Because I know that if I told my dad, hey, I was tempted. I looked at an image I shouldn't have looked at. I know my dad's going to absolutely take away all my screens, limit screen time, do all this different yeah. stuff, you know, and we need to start thinking about that, you know, how do we respond? Are we someone that our kids feel safe talking to? Not like we should let them do whatever they want, mm -hmm. but are we safe? We might want to think about our response and maybe even it's like repeat after me, parents, say this, say, I'm so glad you told me 
thank you for trusting me with this. Hey, let's mm -hmm. sit down and let's dialogue about this. So, Paul, how do you handle, I mean, the four teenage daughters? Uh, do you limit four. screen time? Yeah. All girls, dude. Four yeah, all, in the home right in now. In the home right now. Yeah. Four of them. Wow. I know. I should have a cape. Do you, do you uh, recommend this now that I'm married? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be careful. Be careful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you limit them or do you, do you have uh, the discussions or he, oh, you just kind of hope a constant, that it all works out in the end? It's a constant discussion. If there's one thing that I have learned as a parent, uh, particularly of teenagers and then particularly uh, of teenage girls, it's take all of your natural instincts and ignore them. Because the natural instinct is to kill that thing. Well, yeah, <laughs> to chloroform something, you know. But it's <laughs> not recommended at yeah, all. Yeah, by the because way. then there's like you know the legal trouble. Anyway, so but for the girls to be able, exactly as you said, to be to know that they can come and talk to dad. I mean, all I know is that there was one evening where my daughter handed me the phone and she was talking to a boy and she said, Dad, I don't know what to say. Can you tell me what to say? Mm -hmm. And then she said, Dad, can you just go ahead and write this for me? And I ended up having a conversation. You, you should know, have took a he, selfie and sent it to him. Dude, one day, he's gonna, if, he's in, if he's watching this, I'm like, I'm really sorry. You were actually talking to me that entire evening. That's right. And, I, and, I, and all I had to say about the whole situation, whatever I did wow. to have my daughter trust me enough, yeah. to, don't screw that up. Just Absolutely. whatever you did, don't screw that up. So the one way that you can easily screw that up is by coming down with an anvil on something mm -hmm. like your phone time or your, your screen time, how much time you're spending, where, as opposed to saying, okay, let's talk about this mm -hmm. as adults. Because if you talk to me when I was a teenager, like I was like, I'm here and you're here, I don't know if I look a little rebellious to you, mm -hmm. but I am. <laughs> and, 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 that, and now picture me as a, as a 15 year old or a 16 year old, I would have been like, yeah, okay, I, you know, I wouldn't have... That wouldn't have worked. I would have no. not, but if you spoke to me and said, let's have a conversation, what do you think is the right thing to do here to protect you, well, how, how do you think I should, I should how, help me help you? I would have been yeah. like, all right, okay. Mm -hmm. Then we would have had a conversation. Mm -hmm. When you have those conversations and actually have a relationship with your kid, you just put in that bonding time, it's okay to have helpful boundaries. I mean, most experts out there are saying yep. it's probably good for phones not to go in the kids' bedrooms at night. Mm -hmm. It's okay to say, hey, this is one of the things we're not gonna do. Not just because I said so, no. but because you know, you're having these conversations, you're talking, and hopefully yeah. that you even, you know, maybe they're involved in that decision. You know, how do you think, how do you think, how, how do you handle it with your future kids? <laughs> yeah, or, or the young people that, because you deal with a lot of young people too, Brody. How, you know, are you able to have some conversations with that? And of course, I know you're taking notes from Yeah, I'm taking time. notes. He's like, these guys are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I try to practice some of these things in my own life also. I know I try to spend uh, some time during the day where I actually just put my phone away. And I've even noticed when my phone's away, I'll check my pockets to see it's in me. Because, see if it's on me or yeah. I know because I'm mine always, is. Yes. I'm good, I feel <laughs> <laughs> And um, yeah, just constantly practicing, like we leave our phones now outside of our bedroom also when we go to bed at night. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we take a break at a certain time. So mm -hmm. I think if the conversations like we're talking about now, it gets people thinking, talking, and then we can all uh, just come to an agreement with how we should handle our devices. Yeah, and I think we're gonna, you know, I, I like what you guys are saying too, is we need to model it. Uh, in the last couple moments we have here, um, how important, uh, because this is a, a program of faith, uh, we're followers of Jesus, where does prayer come into this and wisdom that the Lord promises to give us? in helping to navigate these things. Well, I hope as we're engaging in these dialogue, you know, this is one of those things where we're gonna be, you know, in a world so full of explicit lies, we need to be pointing our kids to explicit truth. So I hope in these dialogues that a lot of these dialogues will um, lead to open up conversations about God. Not not because we're forcing it like, oh, let's see what the Bible says about this in Leviticus, <laughs> you know, but maybe what we can do is, as we're talking about Quick, some of this app, stuff, you know, I mean, we might find, you know, passages where we're talking as we're thinking about this of being distracted. Gosh, I want to connect with someone so bad that, that, you know, here's something that's interfering with my connection. You open up the Mary and Martha passage and start talking about, hey, Martha, you're so distracted. But wait, I was trying to connect with you, Jesus, but food got in the way. You know, hey, maybe that's going to be something that you can use to talk about. And, and, and we should constantly be pointing to scripture. Mm -hmm. And Paul, I mean, if you felt that uh, the leading of the Lord in the middle of Maybe yeah. a kind of a tense situation, I a practical. Think a practical, the only practical thing that I can 
honestly throw out there is throwing yourself onto the ground, on your face, and going, help me to know what the right thing is to do just today. Yeah. Forget tomorrow, forget yesterday. We've got these four girls who are all different and all need to be like guided differently and all need to be also respected. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, like, I would love to be able to say there's just one way to do it. Make, make this rule for everybody, make that rule for everybody, or set these boundaries, I, I, I would agree with you. But I'm telling you, it is a day-to-day -day process of just like literally going, I am a kid myself. If we're jumping to reach the moon and I'm jumping seven inches and my daughter's jumping five, but the moon is 365,000 kilometers away, we're all kids. So I think that really helps as far as being able to just kind of laying yourself before God and going, just, it's your wisdom, dude, not mine, and help me to know what to say and the right moves at the right time because any model I've ever seen as far as what you should do is a joke. <laughs> yeah. So Brody, as a parent to be, um, as you look forward to that, I know that's part of the, your plan and desire. Um, does this intimidate you when you see all the technology and all the distractions out there? It's going to be okay. No, it, it, does, it, it doesn't intimidate me. And, and when I think about our Lord Jesus, I think about always going back to him and directing people to him. I, I know when I'm sitting in church when I first became a believer I was on my phone a lot being distracted but the Holy Spirit prompted me leave my phone in my car so now I go to church and I have my paper Bible where I'm less distracted mm -hmm. so if we're always pointing people towards Jesus the Holy Spirit is gonna prompt and do the guiding and teaching mm -hmm. And I appreciate people bringing their Bibles, the actual paper one mm -hmm. to church, because I'd be up there preaching and thinking, they're all checking their email. They're not interested in me. <laughs> and they might be. They might be. Yeah. And it's so easy to get distracted. You could, you could have your Bible app, but you're distracted from the text messages, emails, and next thing you know, you're off somewhere else. I'm fact-checking how many kilometers the moon is from Earth <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah, I was pretty impressed with that, too. <laughs> hey, guys, it's been... You're going to find them right. <laughs> it's been great having you here on the panel, and uh, we look forward to the next time that we get together. Thank you, Jonathan, Paul, and Brody. You crushed it.